As, on this very program on Friday, Kenyon Drake, the new Raiders running back, told us he thinks the Raiders offense is going to space. That was his phrase. Let's make our picks, though, for a player whose game is going to go to new heights in 2021 with the hashtag 2021 out of this world. Who's going to space? Nate, you love all that stuff. Okay, uh, 2021 out of this world. I'm going with this young man out of Atlanta. Calvin. Okay. Get rid of him. Ridley. Yeah. <laughs> Just think about that for a second. My man is so good that the Atlanta Falcons got rid of Julio Jones, mm -hmm. the best receiver they have ever had, a Hall of Famer, one of the most dominant players of his era, and they got rid of him because they have a talented Gowns roster. Do you know Calvin Ridley's numbers in 2020? Talk Tell about me. a man had 90 receptions, just about 1,400 yards, 1,374. All career highs. So think about what he's going to do when there's more rocks that are able to go uh -huh. his way. I know they brought in Calvin Pitts. I get it. But the number one undoubtedly receiver for the Atlanta Falcons is Calvin Ridley. He will be out of this world and in space this year. Here we go. You could argue this guy is already in outer space. He's an alien. He's an astronaut. Whatever you want. But how about Lamar Jackson? Okay. Okay. A guy who Deep like he's already won yeah. an MVP. He's, he's coming up on what there. is likely going to be an extremely lucrative contract with the Baltimore Ravens, probably pushing $40 million per year. I'm excited to see it. In 2020, like so many other guys, Lamar didn't have a normal offseason. Wasn't working out with the team. Mm -hmm. He was back in Florida. Tried to work out in a park. That wasn't allowed down there. So he was really right. kind of stuck. Yeah. He wasn't quite himself physically early on in the season. Then, of course, had his own bout with COVID. Still was able to pop out of the bathroom, put together one of the memorable performances of the entire sure. season. As he develops now into year four, if you're going to pay a guy that type of money, if you cut him loose a little bit more, not just in terms of what he can do in the running game, but the passing game. Every defense is still daring him. Throw outside the numbers. We're going to stack the box. We're going to take away the run. We dare you to throw outside the numbers. Well, you go into your draft for Shad Bateman. You try to give more weapons on the outside. You sign Sammy Watkins. Maybe this is where we see Lamar cut it loose Ooh, just a little I bit more and go from here all the way up. Wow. So curious to see what he gets paid. You know who else I like? J.K. Dobbins this year. I think he'll be great there for Lamar Jackson. Uh, I'm going to go with, if you're a Bears fan, you know this hashtag because you know it's his Instagram handle. Really understand me is David Montgomery mm. on Twitter, on IG, and I love him. I put here 137.3 total yards a game over the last six weeks. Only Derrick Henry had more. Eight touchdowns over the last six weeks. Only Alvin Kamara had more. He finished the season incredibly. I think it carries over to 2021. Andy Dalton can start week one whatever eventually it will be Justin Fields you're gonna have to worry about his legs and you're not gonna be able to come crashing down on David Montgomery I really like him and sneaky value in fantasy I looked this morning he's going 18th ish at running back between Chris Carson and DeAndre Swift huge value sign me up for David Montgomery that was good info people people slept on him his last so six good. weeks were so good and now he's got Justin Fields that's the kind of fantasy thing you want no one else to know like you want to reserve that for yourself because Montgomery is really good I'm just such a giver you are there we go I'm gonna move on uh number two guys everybody of course has an opinion about Aaron Rodgers and what's going on with him. It's kind of coming to a head right now. Uh, one of his former teammates, tight end Mercedes Lewis, told TMZ, I hope so. I hope he's coming back. I hope to see my guy there. So he weighed in. He got the treatment at the airport and everything, but everyone's talked about it. Uh, Mercedes Lewis, Peyton Manning, pretty much the entire league has their take on Aaron Rodgers. Let's go outside the league. Let's pick someone you would love to hear give an Aaron Rodgers opinion from any industry in the world with the hashtag unexpected Rogers commentary. Nate, who needs to weigh in? All right, I, I want to go with the guy that never holds his tongue. Go on. Um, and it's one of the more respected voices in all of football, whether you love him or you hate him. I'm going with the round mound of rebound, uh, Charles Barkley. Anytime Charles talks about anything, you just love it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's just terrible. Ter I, it's terrible. First of all, first of all, uh, check. Can we listen up? Uh, first of all, I feel like uh, Aaron Rodgers needs a second. And first of all, I just the team's fall. It's just a terrible, ter terrible, terrible situation. I'm going with Chuck because anytime he talks, mm -hmm. I sit and listen. Whether I love what he's saying or not, shout out to Charles. Amazing. Martin. They have Chuck's, a who's Chuck siding with. In that, Good in that question. Uh, I think he's going he's gonna to side with the player. He, he always with sides with the player. Oh, really? Yeah, he, he, I don't think he rides with the organizations like They that. do a segment on that show called Who He Play For, where they just name a player and then Chuck <laughs> has to say what team is on. That's it. Nate, we might try that with you at one of these points. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> right? I'm down with that. What do you got, Tom? <laughs> I'm going to go with Bill Gates. Okay. Now, okay. hear me out on this, okay? Bill Gates. Well done. CD Rom? Just got out of his own long-term relationship. Sure. He is used to complex problem-solving okay. in the real world. 
I also would like to hear if Bill got some feedback from Aaron Rodgers about the Microsoft ter- Surface tablet, since everybody has used that meme about a hundred different times. We love the Microsoft Surface tablet, the absolute best tablet on the market. <laughs> it seems like you need someone who's at a higher level. We know that Mark Murphy has made the reference to what Ted Thompson would say about Aaron mm-hmm. Rodgers, a complicated fellow. We know this is a complicated situation. Maybe you need somebody who's used to like solving crises overseas to mm-hmm. intervene. Love it. I like awesome. that. I like awesome. that a lot, sir. Bill Gates, great computer drawing, by the That's way. That's pretty good. That's, uh, yeah, we had these in seventh grade at Valley yeah, like Middle the, School the, right the there. The hard disk and the CD. Right, yeah, you had Oregon to pull the, thing, pull the thing out. The, Num- was in the computer Number lab. munchers. <laughs> Odell Lake. Anyone at GMFU with your thoughts? I'm just going to go with Chester. This is my dad. I spent the weekend with him. I was in Chicago. He is a grandfather to three. You guys know him. He's funny in general, and he's got takes that are very against Aaron Rodgers. He wants him out of there. Mm-hmm. Out of the division, not on his side at all. He's got two grandkids that are Packers fans that have betrayed him, and he's got one daughter who is a Kansas City Chiefs fan, and so he would like to pull them over to the bear side, ipso facto. Lots of negative takes about Aaron Rodgers, which I love. There's probably a lot of takes in general coming lots, out of Chester. Lots of takes out of he's Chester. He's from the take yeah. generation. He is from the take. He's from the, <laughs> yeah, he's from that. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. We need years. to hear Chester's takes on crypto and the vaccine and all that yes. stuff. He, like, he'll bring his accordion. He'll play it for all of us. <laughs> It'll be great. All right. What's next? Well, speaking of another generation, I, I this is a national treasure. Ah. The late, great Andy Rooney. If you used to watch 60 Minutes, they would do 58 minutes of hard news and then two minutes of a curmudgeon at a desk is whining about how he doesn't understand bottled water. And regular water is free. Why would I pay for bottled? And it was compelling as hell. I think he would have amazing thoughts on Aaron Rodgers. He would broadcast from the CBS Broadcast Center where this show originated. Hallowed ground. Andy Rooney, we miss you. And last of all, guys, this is the most important one. So Colts owner, Jim say, we know he's not interested in spending A-plus money for B-level free agents. That's for sure. But he is very open to dropping some dollars on music memorabilia. God bless him. In a Heritage auction conducted over the weekend, Mr. Ursay bid $950,000 and won a piano used by Elton John for 20 years. He got himself Whoa. the Elton piano. Pretty cool item. So why don't we pick a random celebrity item, piece of memorabilia, whatever you want, that we would personally pay top dollar for with the hashtag memorable memorabilia. <laughs> I like that. Um, I'll stick with uh, something in the music space. A guy that was wildly popular in the 90s. Um, if you don't know any of his songs, then you weren't paying attention to music at that time. And I also feel like this item is going to be worth its weight in gold. I'm going with MC <laughs> Hammer's gold <laughs> toilet. If you're not familiar with Hammer, oh, is that, is that his actual gold toilet? I think we got it. Man, he sold us that picture for two bucks. <laughs> Oh, I, thought, I thought that was actually in your house. One point was <laughs> the hottest artist was making crazy money and then just started spending money recklessly. It's well documented. But if I get my hands on that toilet, not only will I have a piece of memorabilia that everybody knows about, but in case this world goes into a uh, poca, po- uh, post-apocalyptic oh, depression, okay. yeah. I'll have some gold that I could break down and get some money for it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'd really love from the sports world would be a collection of NFL draft night wardrobe. Some of the highlights, I I feel like, frame these on the wall. Uh, Going all the way back to Deion Sanders uh, with the chains and the jumpsuit. Brett Favre in the T-shirt and the jorts laying on his bed on the gigantic cell phone talking to the Atlanta Falcons. There it is. Recently, how about Ezekiel Elliott, the half shirt? I would bust that out on the first Sunday of game day morning this season. Full on half shirt. Pull it out of the glass. Wear it myself. And I'll fill it out quite the same way. Naval Andy Academy? Gregg, is that what you're going to say? Andy Gregg is listening to this, and he's going to have you wear. We can get that about. suit, Tom. Yeah, that know. was on tape you just said that. Yeah. <laughs> Make it happen. Sounds like a great thing for week one Sunday, game day morning. I'll go with her real name in real life, the actress is Mia Sarah. The first thing I thought with this Earth Say thing was, if I bought that, if I got that piano, like, I'd have to store my sweaters in it. Like, I couldn't walk around sure. my apartment. It's so big. I needed something little, something cute. I was the youngest of three, so I was too young when I saw this, but Sloan Peterson's white fringe leather jacket from Ferris Bueller. Smoke was the coolest thing I've ever seen. I wanted to be here. I pretended I was her. I tried to make a fringe jacket like her when I was like literally six, seven years old. So yes, this is a little memorabilia item I would want. It's heavy fringe, isn't it? I used to love that jacket too. It's such a good jacket. made an impression on me. I'm sure it did. No, it really did. I'm sure it did. But you know what's funny, Kay? I also have a jacket for mine. Because if there was one cooler 80s jacket, Michael Jackson's red Ah, zipper jacket. Are you out of your mind? (laughs) 
Look at this thing. It sold at auction for $85,000, which personally I think is a steal. You ain't lying. But just every jacket after that had zippers. Every kid with a one glove with the jacket on. It was a full Halloween costume. Not to be confused with this red and black leather jacket from Thriller, which is also great. This is the full-on beat it. We're dancing and having switchblade fights in the video. Like, it made no sense. But, man, that jacket was smoking. Look at that thing. That's my item right there. Kyle, don't spill a vodka cranberry on that right. jacket, though. <laughs> That's a deep pull from Kay. Who knows? I used to buy things, with spill tags. on them with the tax, and then return them to the store and yeah, get my money that's back. That's not one you'd want to do that. <laughs> no way. My friend, Morgan Morning Football, that was Trend of the World. We